Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, we're going to go through a demo in the lab of the boot up process. And we'll also talk about the different memory locations there again as well. So the lab topology, we've got R1 on the left, which has got IP address 10.10.10.1. It's connected to switch one, which has got IP address 10.10.10.2 on its VLAN one, SVI. And we've got a TFTP server on 10.10.10.10. Now, I'm using Packet Tracer for this lab because if you use one of the other virtual labs, it doesn't support playing about with the different images in Flash, but Packet Tracer does. The other way that you can do it is by using real devices, but I didn't want to be messing about with the iOS images on real devices. It's easier to do it in Packet Tracer. So I recommend you use Packet Tracer if you want to follow along with this as well. Okay, so that's what the lab topology looks like. So let's jump on to R1 and have a look at the boot up process. So I'll do a reload and hit enter to confirm. And you can see that read-only ROMON was initialized first. And then if I just scroll back a bit here now, after ROMON, it self decompresses the image. So this is the system image that is in Flash and it is decompressing it because it's in an archive format, kind of like a zip file. So it decompresses it and it loads it into RAM memory. And then the system will boot up. I press return to get started, go into the enable prompt, and that's the system booted up. After it finished loading the system image, which you can see here, the next thing it did after that was it loaded the startup config from NVRAM again into RAM, the working memory on the router where it becomes the running config. So on the router here, if I do a show version, I'll be able to see what the system image is. Let me just scroll up to the top of that command and I can see that this is on a 2900 series router and I'm running version 15.1 for M4. And if I do a show flash, I'll see that the system image is in there. There it is, and it's the only system image that is there right now. Now, you can actually delete the system image out of flash. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll copy the file name here, and I'll enter the command delete flash colon, and then the name of the file, I'll paste it in and hit enter. It asks me to confirm, are you sure you want to delete that file name? And asks me to confirm again, and I say yes. And if I do a show flash again now, you'll see that the file is no longer there. Now, the system is still up. I can still get to config T. I can still enter configuration commands in here, and the router will still keep running just fine. The reason is that when the system boots up, the system image is loaded from flash into RAM, and that is the working memory. So as long as the system is up and running, I'm not going to have a problem. A problem is going to come when the system next reboots. So let's do that. I'll do a reload. Yep. And it wouldn't be as quick as this on a real physical router, but you see when it goes to boot up again, it can't boot up it boots up into ROM on mode because it wasn't able to find a system image in Flash. So real world, be really careful that you don't do that. It Actually, on older routers and switches, it's quite easy to do it because on some of the older images, 
by default, if you copy anything into Flash, it will ask you, do you want to delete everything that is already there? And if you're not really thinking and you go ahead and do that and you're just copying some other file into Flash, then you'll lose your system image that way. So just be careful. Do not delete the system image out of Flash because if you do, it's a pain to recover it. Let's have a look and see how you do recover it now. So I'll go to a browser. So I've got Firefox open here and in Google, you see that I searched for Cisco 2900 ROM on recovery because that's the model of router I'm on there. And then it's this file here for the 2900, which I've already opened in another tab. And in the section recovering the system image with the TFTP download command, it tells you how to recover the image. So you will need a TFTP server to do this, which we do actually have. I'll show you the TFTP server in a minute. So on the TFTP server, you need to have the system image on there. And then the document that you'll get from the Cisco website will tell you the commands to enter that I'm just scrolling here. And then down at the bottom here, it gives us an example config. So when you get to the ROM on prompt, the router is not operational. It has not booted up. So it doesn't have any IP addresses on there. The startup config has not been loaded. So you're going to need to configure IP connectivity at the ROM on prompt. These are the commands to do that. So we enter an IP address for the router. We also enter the subnet mask. You also have to enter a default gateway. If the router is on the same subnet as the TFTP server, then just put the TFTP server's IP address in here. Then the IP address of the TFTP server, and then the file name, the system image that you're going to use to recover that is on the TFTP server. Finally, you put in the command TFTP download. It will then connect out to the TFTP server and download this file and copy it into Flash. The last thing you do after that is enter the reset command and that will reboot the router. And because you've now got a working system image in Flash again, it will be able to boot up. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the TFTP server in Packet Tracer. So in Packet Tracer, if you go to the End Devices tab down in the bottom left here, and then you can drag up this generic server, which is the third one along in this version of Packet Tracer, and bring it up here. If I click on this now and go to the Services, you'll see that TFTP is enabled on that server by default. So there is already iOS system images on the TFTP server. In the real world, then you can download a free TFTP server or you can use a paid one. There's lots of TFTP software available on the internet. Again, just Google for that and you'll find something. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free, Right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.